you can see how that there is kind of ridged up. It isn't real hard, but it's just there's no moisture in it at all. And um, I mean, you can dig down in there, there's just no moisture at all in it. And uh, you know, crops just can't do anything. Just like you're watering your flowers at home, they can't do anything without moisture. Hampshire County, West Virginia farmers are beginning to feel the effects of the triple digit heat that has gripped the area for over a week now. I'm Greg Larry for HampshireReview.com. What is making the high heat a problem is the lack of rain. Lawns all across the area have been turned brown by zero moisture and daily temperatures ranging from 98 to 103 degrees. Nighttime temperatures are barely dropping into the 70s. The dry conditions are causing concerns for farmers who are seeing many late planted crops struggling from the lack of moisture. I have visited with John Arnold at the Arnold Family Farm outside Romney, West Virginia to get a first-hand glimpse at the issues facing the family farmer. What's killing us right now, uh, as you can look down through here behind me, this should be eight rows of uh, sweet corn that should come off around Labor Day. And what's happened is no moisture in the ground. Uh, the plants haven't come up um, consistently, and some of them not at all. And if you look right down here on the ground, um, here's an example of two plants of corn planted the same day, the same second. And this one's four or five inches tall. They were planted about two weeks ago, and this one has just caught enough moisture uh, to start germinating. So those two plants of corn are going to have uh, you know, two weeks difference in when that ear of corn, if it ever makes an ear of corn, will be ready. There's just no moisture to germinate. Probably if you've seen corn fields throughout the county and throughout the region here, uh, you noticed in the middle of the day like this, it's three, four o'clock here today, the corn just sticking straight in the air like spikes. And if you look down here at this corn, uh, we call it corn, it's rolling. And what it is is normally these, these uh, are really laid out flat and green. I mean, those plants are just sitting there withering, <laughs> wanting, wanting moisture in the worst way. And corn loves 100 degree temperatures, but it also likes a lot of moisture. And without one or the other, it just can't grow. And this corn, this corn, uh, you know, it's two months away from being uh, harvested, but without rain, it, it'll just wither up and die, I'm sure. Uh, this is a plant of corn that we'll probably pick in about a week. Um, and you can see the size of that ear of corn, how small it is. Um, and, and it's almost ready to pick. You can see it's not much bigger than my hand. And that's a result of dry weather. Um, chuck it back there, you can see it's edible. It's, it's almost ready to pick and that's all the bigger it's gonna get. That ear of corn's not but about five and a half, six inches long. Corn requires a lot of moisture right about the time it's creating that kernel. And, uh, and if, if it doesn't get the right conditions, uh, moisture being a huge, huge part of that is this, uh, you know, you'll get maybe clear up the side of it, it won't be filled out, or up here on the end. And like I say, this is doing a pretty good job for no moisture in six weeks, but uh, uh, that's, one of the, that's one of the bad things, certain varieties of corn, without moisture, you'll, you'll get those kernels missing all up and down the side or out on the end. Yeah, the stalk of corn you're looking at there is just, um, I mean, it's really suffering from the, this desert-like heat and no, uh, no moisture. They, those leaves, instead of being laid out flat where they can gather everything they need, are really just curling up and, and trying, to, trying to conserve everything that that particular stalk of corn has. The last significant rainfall was on June 16th, according to meteorologist Howard Bernstein with WUSA 9 and that was only 0.63 of an inch. Thunderstorms, which usually show up on the scene during summer, have been nowhere to be found. Most weather forecasters are offering little hope at this point for a change in the conditions anytime soon. With low rainfall in the spring months, it has left the rivers and streams dropping to extremely low levels or drying up altogether. Cattle farmers, finding their grazing pastures dried up, are having to feed the livestock hay earlier than usual. This is forcing farmers to invest more dollars into hay and to face possible shortages later in the year. Picking produce is also difficult in the high heat. Irrigation is an option, but many smaller farmers are not set up for it and would need to spend more money to get a system into place, causing the cost of their produce to rise. I stopped in at the Barefoot Farmers Produce Stand along Route 50 east of Romney and spoke with Zanna Whitaker about the challenges she faces if these conditions persist. What's some of your concerns uh, as summer wears on if this heat continues? Um, I would say quality is probably going to be my biggest concern. 
water is definitely going to be at a shortage. The quality of the produce, how does that um, get affected as, a, as drought conditions continue on? Any vegetable or fruit that you have is going to need a lot of moisture in it for a taste. I mean, people don't want dry things. What are we going to look at if uh, the weather continues and heat continues on until well, basically into August and uh, uh, most of August, what kind of conditions we'll be uh, faced with at that point? Well, I mean, this is as early as, as it's gotten this dry that I ever remember, and everybody I've talked to, the same thing. Uh, you know, usually in August, we always get four weeks or so with not much rain, um, but you're talking about basically back into the middle of June when things really started suffering and even before. So we're only at the 1st of July and uh, this is about as rough as I've seen their crops, our produce crops look in a while. Uh, pasture and hay is going to be a major, major concern already is. I've talked to farmers this week already that are feeding a bale or two of hay a day to their, to their cattle and hay was short, you know, most of it's 30, 40 to 50 percent of what we normally make. And uh, if we start, have to start feeding a bale or two of that a day starting middle of July or end of July and we don't get some serious rain. I mean that's the only thing we can hope and pray for is, uh, is August, you know, we get unseasonable amounts of rain and to bring fall pasture and everything back and, and we're finally at a point in the cattle industry where we've been on a downslope and we're starting back up price wise and calves were things were looking good for calf prices and we're gonna end up spending it all on having to buy feed and, and calves being smaller so I don't know, it's, uh, it's a never-ending fight with the farm and Mother Nature. From John Arnold's farm, I'm Greg Leary for HampshireReview.com.